Okay, so we'll start off this haul with another micro from GIPRC. This is the Phoenix 2.5 Bind and Fly. I believe this comes with the FreeSky XM Plus receiver. And here are the specs of the package. Okay, so you get your normal stickers and you get the frequency chart for the video transmitter along with some instructions on how to set your channel band and power. That's pretty nice. So there's the drone itself. It's uh, well protected in foam. Get a manual for the uh, XM Plus receiver. Get a few sets of the Gemfan Flash 2540 three bladed props. Get an OSD controller board for the Runcam Micro Swift, I believe. That's the camera that's on here. And I think this is some connectors for perhaps receivers. Got another a whip antenna here for the video transmitter with a micro FL connector. I think the one down here is. Yeah, this one, the one that's on here is a little bit longer, so it's a little bit shorter one, I believe. We'll take a look at that. This might just be a spare. Okay, a couple of forever tubes for the uh, uh, receiver antennas and some Velcro straps. Not sure if I'll use these. And then you get some sticky pads for your battery, and you, uh, you get two different kinds, one for the bottom and one for the top. Get an XT30 connector, some Allen keys, and some spare M2 screws. Okay, so here's just a quick look at the drone. Pretty nice. I think it's three millimeter bottom plate, unibody design. You put the battery on the bottom, and if you do so, it does have a nice little flat area here, and all the carbon is chamfered, so it shouldn't break your battery strap. A little bit of space there for your battery strap if you want to bottom mount it, but you can also top mount it, and you also have uh, some flat areas here for the top mounted battery area. Also, you get some sticky pads for that, and you get a little bit of space there for your battery strap as well. I think this has the same stack that comes in the Hummingbird, uh, the one that's a two-inch model with the the same motors here, but different KV. This is a 1106. These are the 1106 uh, 4500 KV, I believe. Yeah, these are 4500 KV. Uh, ones with the Hummingbird were 6,000 kV on a 2 inch prop. This is a 4,500 kV on a 2.5 inch prop. And you should be able to do 4S on this one, no problem. The ESC in here is the same ESC, it's like a 12 amp ESC, so it ought to be enough. Uh, it does burst up to 15, I believe. Um, obviously, they, you know, unlike a lot of other companies like SPC Maker, this, this company does test fly their products, so uh, this motor ought to be okay on that size. Of ESC, although the 20 amp would have been nicer to have. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, but I think the 12 amp should be enough. You get um, in the back here is like a LED buzzer inside this little TPU print here, and then you have a little capacitor for video noise filtering that's also soldered to the battery lead. You get an XD, I guess this is like an XD30. Uh, battery wire ought to be enough because the 4500 kV motors are going to be drawing less amps. Get the whip antenna for your video transmitter, and it looks like it just attaches to the back of the VTX right there, although you can't really see it that well. And then you got your two antennas here for the XM Plus receiver, so you're just going to stick on your forever tubes on here to protect the antennas from getting chopped up from the props. Pretty nice uh, camera cage there, should protect the camera pretty well. I think this is a 2 point, yes, yeah, a 2.1 millimeter lens, with a little wider angle field of view in this one. Not sure if the rails are going to show up in the FPV feed. Doesn't look like it will. You can see very good camera protection. You would have to hit this right dead center to break that lens. So this is a pretty nice design. Yeah, I've been waiting for this one. I, I think uh, this is pretty similar in terms of specs, in terms of like the motor being the same size and KV as that Skystars X120, which I don't fly anymore because one of the motors died on me. So I've been waiting for this one because I've been wanting to fly two and a half inches on 4S. And this is a much, much nicer looking model than that Skystars X120, which didn't, I didn't really like that well. Although there were a lot of reviewers that liked that. I didn't particularly like that model too much. But this one, this one I think will do really well. So I'm looking forward to flying this one. So along with the uh, drone, I also got an extra set of the motors. These are 1106-4500 KVs. And the reason I got an extra set is I wanted to try and uh, run these on a 3-inch setup. So I know that the Emacs uh, Babyhawk R3-inch, that's an 1106-4500 KV motor as well. And it runs fine on 
4S on a 3-inch prop, so I'm thinking these motors should be just fine. But interestingly enough, though, in the specs here, it says here, uh, yeah, 2 to 4S, 2 to 3-inch propeller, so it ought to do well, though. And that on the Baby Hawk R, that one was a uh, 13 amp PC on the, the Mini Magnum. Anyway, just a quick look at what you get in the box here. The motor itself, and yeah, pretty small C clip T, uh, T prop design. Motor wire isn't too long, should be enough though. Then you get, looks like you get three different sizes of screws. You get the M2 seven millimeters for the propellers, and then you get the uh, M2 five for three millimeter thick arms, and the M2 four for two millimeter thick arms. So they give you a lot of screw options for this motor, pretty nice. Okay, we got another Gep RC product here. This is called the Span Tower or the Span F4 Tower. And this is the F405 flight controller. You get a, uh, looks like a 40 amp BLLES ESC and you get a video transmitter, 5.8 gigahertz up to 600 milliwatts. I believe that's also power switchable. I think that's smart audio. But uh, this ought to be pretty nice. Uh, all the gem, all the Gep RC products are always, have that sort of premium quality uh, feel to them uh, whenever I see them. A little documentation here. Get your specs. You guys want to read that. It's got an LCE filter and it'd be the VTX board. So, here, so it looks like the flight control in the VTX is on a single board. We'll, we'll take a look at that here in a second. MQ6000, so AK gyro. And it has an LC filter, 3 amp BEC. And then you got the ESC board, it says 2 to 5S LiPo, not 6S, interestingly enough. And a frequency table chart for the video transmitter, all along with instructions. And this is what you get in the box. Uh, it looks like uh, some connectors here. You got a capacitor, XT60, and you get some, get your typical mounting hardware and wiring looms. Now I think this here is the uh, SMA adapter. Okay, so here's a look at the stack, and yeah, here's the video transmitter. It comes with a heatsink, pretty nice. Uh, F405 chip, MP6000. You get your micro connectors here. You got a boot button, MMCX connector for the video transmitter, and it looks like uh, yeah, the two boards are connected via pins. So you have some. Looks like it's some rubber grommets here for soft mounting. So you can probably soft mount both the ESC and the flight controller stack since they're going to be connected via pins here. Yeah, pretty nice looking. Battery connector here. It's got LC filters on board. Yeah, a very nice, clean design. And it just looks like just, it just looks like high quality to me. Yeah. Well, we'll see how this does in the review. Now, this stack does come in uh, their, one of their ready to fly bind and fly models, the five inch drone, which I haven't gotten yet. So we'll have, once we take a look at this first and then obviously we'll see this again in the drone review later. Okay, so we got another uh, mini stack here. This is the Magnum Mini F4. So it's a 20 by 20 stack. And it's a, a four in one EC, flight controller, video transmitter. And this one has, uh, I think this one is 6S capable. So let's see what it says here. Yeah, this there's a sticker covering up this one. So you get a uh, little SMA adapter along with some whip antennas. You got a, looks like an XD60 connector. You got to solder that on yourself and it does come with some heat shrink. And it looks like it's M2.5. Uh, nylon standoffs there, half size board here. See, it's kind of crooked. Yeah, oh, this is kind of sitting on that buzzer right there, so should be okay. And battery leads there. Got a small current sensor on the bottom. It looks like, yeah, it looks like you'll have to solder. You can have little small soldering points here on the side. So you could, I mean, it's two to six, I mean, it has two six S, so you could possibly uh, probably use this on a five inch, but the solder points are pretty tiny because it is a 20 by 20 size stack, but you get two large capacitors here. Yeah, so it looks like they're both 35 volt, 100 microfarads. So should be plenty of video filtering here. 
and uh, it looks like that the video transmitter is connected to the flight controller via these pins. And then the flight controller is connected to the 400 ESC via this little wiring harness here. Uh, but yeah, I don't know a whole lot about this stack. I have a, I'll have a review video later. I believe it's a BL Heli 32 ESC and it's 206 us, but not 100% sure on that. I will obviously check that out and we'll do a review down the road pretty soon. Okay, got another drone here, another micro drone. This is the uh, Lism RC LS X140. I did a review on the frame and a custom build a little bit ago. This is the bind and fly. And looks like the postman did a number on this box. It's all smashed up. But the drone in here seems to be seems to be alright. Uh, what do you got here? We got Couple of battery straps. Uh, I don't like these. Probably won't use them. And you got some M2 screws. And you get a couple of these Avon mini props. These are the three-inch Avons. And a quick look at the drone. And the highlight of this is going to be the motors here, the 1206 4500 kV. Uh, this is set up and to be run on 4S because it comes with a four amp. Uh, sorry, four a four in one 28 amp. Uh, BLLA SDSC, and you got a flight controller with a video transmitter combo board. So in my build, I did a uh, separate flight controller and a separate video transmitter, so you got three boards there. But here you got just two boards, you have a lot more space, and the XM Plus can sit on top of the flight controller there. Got your antennas already uh, heat shrunk here and zip tied to the back. You got a small whip antenna that's on the video transmitter via micro FL connectors. It's kind of just dangling out here. Not really, not sure the reception is going to be that great, but we'll see how it does. Uh, probably have to swap that out at some point. You got a buzzer LED in the back. XT30 connector here where the wire you can see is super thin. Would have been nicer to see thicker wire there. It doesn't have to, I mean, obviously it's a, probably going to draw low current because it's 4500 kV. But that looks pretty thin there for an XT30. And in the front here, looks like you have some sort of generic micro camera here. I don't know who makes this brand. I haven't seen this one yet, so it's probably some sort of generic micro CCD camera. But yeah, we've seen how this frame flies on an 1106 uh, 7500 kV motor. Now we're going to see how it flies on a 1206 uh, 4500 kV motor on 4. So it'll fly uh, differently. The motor might be more efficient than 1106 because it's a little bit wider stator. And on 4S on a 3 inch prop, so yeah. Just look at the bottom. So it looks like a pretty decent build. And we'll get up in the air and we'll see, we'll get a review up pretty soon. Okay, so I got a couple more parts here. This is the uh, Speedix GS25A 4 in 1 uh, ESC. And I'm not sure if this is BLHeli S or BLHeli 32. And that doesn't really say here, but. Uh, this looks like a 425 amp EC 2 to 4 S. It's 20 by 20 size, and you got your battery connector on there. No connector on this side, just battery leads wired on. Yeah, I'm gonna do a review on this one. I heard good things about this one. That it was a pretty good stack, or a pretty good 409 EC with low uh, video noise. So, we'll see how that does. And I got this one here. It's like, I think it's called the R Charlance. This is a 30 by 30 size 401 ESC. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's BLHeli. Yeah, it's BLHeli S here, DHOT 600. And this is 2 to 6S. So if you're looking to do a 6S build, this is one of the lowest cost uh, 6S 401 ESCs out there. I think this was around 26 or $27. So if you're looking for 35 amp, I think versus the 40 amp uh, BLHeli S up to 6S. This is going to be one of your cheaper options for your low-cost drone builds. Okay, so I picked up a pack of these heat sinks here. And you're kind of wondering, well, what am I using heat sinks for? It comes in a pack of, I think, 10 here. You get them off of Amazon. And so, for those of you guys that have the video transmitters on the flight controller, if the video transmitter, if you're running it at the full power of 600 milliwatts or whatever, it's going to generate a lot of heat. And especially if you don't have good uh, airflow in your frame, you may have a flight re flight controller reset. So this is what these are for. These are made by AKK. They come in that pack of, I think it's 8 or 10. And you just use some adhesive, some double-sided foam, sticky tape, and stick it to the top of this metal RF shield here that's going to be, it'll, it'll absorb a lot of the heat. 
it does add a little bit of height to your flight controller. Um, but this ought to radiate a lot more of the heat away from the video transmitter chip and, and prevent your flight controller from resetting. And this is also going to be useful on the uh, AKK Ultimate or the FX2 Ultimate that goes to like 1.2 watts. That also gets pretty hot. And so something like this would be pretty useful to stick right on there and uh, uh, take the heat away and keep things cool. So links to all this in the description below. Okay, so I got some more goodies from Fox here. Uh, standard stickers. Got two new cameras, and this is the Predator V3 Micro and Mini, or standard and Mini. So I don't believe the, in terms of the image quality, that's no, that's has changed. I think they've added a feature where they, they can do 16.9 and PAL MTSC switching. I believe that's the case with this V3 version. Yeah, so it looks like the same uh, mini case and micro case. It doesn't look like it's any, any different. So yeah, I'll have reviews on these coming up pretty soon. I'm pretty sure the image quality will be the same. I've, I've heard that they haven't changed anything, so the image quality should look the same as the V2. And they also sent me a t-shirt. I think Fox here is starting to add more swag to their store. Shirts, hats, and stuff. It's a pretty nice shirt here. It's a t-shirt with a logo in the front. And yeah, it's a 93% polyester, 7% spandex, so it's going to be something pretty good for, like, uh, probably exercising. For me, in my case, I want to go play tennis. And there's nothing on the back, just a Fox Street logo on the top, but the back is completely blank. Looks pretty nice. Okay, you got another box here from Diatone. They are just pumping out new models like Mad Men over there. So it seems like uh, they really like the Jump Fan uh, 5042 props, so another set of these. And we got a bag of goodies, battery straps, zip ties, whip antenna. Uh, they got some battery pads, sticky pads, uh, lock nuts for the motors, extra wiring looms, typical high tone stuff here, but here is the star of the show. So this is the new Tyrant. Uh, they're calling it the GT Tyrant. Uh, I think it comes in a few different versions. I really like the, uh, the name etched into the carbon. Not a lot of cutouts here in the top plate or the bottom plate. So this is going to be their freestyle frame. And this is, the, I think they have two versions of the frame. A 530 size and a 540 size. Something like that. I'm not exactly sure. What they're calling one a 535. I'll you know, check the link in the description to the website. The naming on this is a little bit strange, and I don't think it's been finalized yet either. But this is the, I believe, the 6S version because it comes with a low KV motor here. This is their new motor, the Edge Racing 2308 1950 KV. So this should do 6S, which is what I plan to fly it on, uh, 5 to 6S. And they also have a 4S version with their, I think their 2306 motor, I believe. So I don't have that one, um, but this one looks pretty nice. Uh, they got the TBS Unify in the back here, mounted to the center here, this part of the stack. It actually has mounting points for a 20 by 22 as well, as well as in the front. So yeah, you could possibly even use like a turtle camera or a split mini mounted up here. In the front here, a lot, a lot of extra space there. But this one has a, it's like a Sparrow Micro Two, and four on AC, and probably enough for a flight controller. And got capacitors in the back there. Yeah, XD60 connector. I didn't, I don't really like the way the antenna, the antenna is going to mount here, the little whip antenna. I saw that in, in some of the pre-production photos and stuff, but. This is the way they wanted to design the frame. It's kind of different. I haven't seen anything like this. Obviously, you know, if you put a GoPro up here, you should have plenty of space here for a battery. Shouldn't have an issue with running into the antenna, but it would have been probably better to have something like a 3D printed part back here. So you have like a, the antenna come off at an angle. That's what you typically see in a lot of these uh, freestyle drones, but this is the way they wanted to go. Uh, we'll have to see if that turns out to be an issue. But yeah, obviously it's, it's screwed down to the top weight, so uh, you know, if anything's going to break in a crash, the antenna will just break and just screw on a new one. So it looks like they've got the new 3D printed part here for the camera mount on the, uh, what was it, the, uh, the GT uh, Rabbit. 
that one had a different part that had was a little bit loose, but I think that this this appears to be yeah the camera's not moving in this one. So uh, this is probably pretty close to the final version. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and fly it, and uh, I'll have a video on this one, and we'll see that pretty soon. Okay, so I got a couple new frames here. These are three-inch frames. This one here is from Flex RC. Yeah, this is the Beefcake 3-inch, and you can see it's got the dual stack mounts for the one cam Split Mini or the Caddx Turtle. Got a top plate, and you got some side plates here. If you want to see what it looks like, uh, click the link in the, in the description. And this is the Airblade Intrepid V2. It's kind of similar looking to the Beefcake. It uh, has the dual stack mounts as well for the one cam Split Mini or the Caddx Turtle, but this one has uh, arms that are removable, so you can see that the, arm, the front arm and back arm are one piece, and it will give you a similar looking frame. This is also for 3 inch um, props, and I believe it has the 9 and 12 millimeter hole pattern, and if you want to see what this looks like, uh, click the link in the description. I'll have a frame reviews on both of these coming up soon. Okay, so I just got in the new Nirvana Dark Knight radio from Underground FPV, and this is a FlySky based transmitter. Comes in this uh, really nice box here, and that's kind of what the transmitter looks like. Kind of uh, uh, reminds me of the Evolution, and of course the uh, Tyrannus uh, FreeSky X Lite, but it's got a touch screen and it's a lot bigger actually. And I believe there's a version on Banggood that's going to be different from this one. Um, this one, this one, it will have uh, more firmware updates. It'll be supported by OpenTX. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to the one on Banggood. I've heard that that's not going to be supported. This is the one from Underground FPV, and it should have full support. But uh, it has probably not going to be out for a few weeks at least. And uh, yeah, here's some stickers and uh, yeah, it uses 18650 lithium-ion batteries. Uh, yes, yeah, so stay tuned for more information on the radio. Uh, things are still kind of in flux, and there's still a lot of stuff uh, that's going to be happening. But uh, I should have all, I should be getting all the updates and such over the coming weeks. So the version that you'll see in the review may be a little bit different, but it's going to give you a quick look at the radio. It's quite a bit bigger and heavier than the X Lite, but it's got a lot of switches and it's got this interesting grip. Big cover here, on off buttons here. You got a neck lanyard holder here, but you can see it's quite front heavy. Of course, there's no batteries in here, but it is very heavy in the front. Let's see. Let's go ahead and take this cover off. So, this cover on here protects the gimbals and the screen. So, there's the screen. Don't have the batteries. So I can't turn it on, but you'll see that in the review. But yeah, once the uh, cover is off, the cover is actually pretty heavy. Yeah, it feels a lot lighter. Gimbals are kind of reminds me of the ones on the Evolution. I don't know if they light up or not. And then see how the the gimbal has this like purple tint. I believe this is also part of the one from Underground FPV. There's this like purple haze tint on everything, even on the grips here. So you could hold it in different ways. Yeah, so yeah, the sticks feel really nice. Nope. A lot of switches here. That all feel pretty good. You got some trim buttons here. And batteries go inside here. Just screw those off. Okay, well, let's a quick look at that. And uh, yeah, obviously I'll have a full review video once I get this up and running.